Welcome to uh, Spotlight. Today we're going to be talking about a hub and after school programs. And our guest today is Vanessa White, who is the after school program director for Two River Supervisory Union. Welcome, Vanessa. Thank you. And as I said, our topic is going to be after school programs, but this is in particular a special kind of after school program. But Vanessa, why don't you tell us first of all, who is Vanessa White? Sure. Um, so I am the program director for the after school programs at Two River Supervisory Union. That involves um, four after school programs at each one of our elementary schools. And then we have out of school programs that run when school's on vacation. And then we also run a summer camp during the summer. And now we're running what we call um, remote learning centers, also known as hubs. We're running a hub for TRSU. Um, and yeah, I've, I've been in this position for, I've been working for TRSU for 13 years now. So I feel like I'm, I'm in a good place. I'm in a good groove and I know the community and the people and, and, and what people need. So that's kind of who I am. Okay, well that sounds like a very good start. <laughs> Now, what, what about the, the after school programs that currently uh, exist, that normally exist, you know, without COVID? Right. So um, we still have our after school programs running this year, which is um, an accomplishment because a lot of schools in the area or schools statewide are not running after school programs. We're still committed to being open for working families. And so we have after school programming running um, in Mount Holly School and Ludlow Elementary School, Cavendish Town <laughs> School and Chester Andover. Um, right now we're working on a little bit of shortened hours just to, um, to allow staff and students to adjust to all that time wearing a mask. Um, I think that, you know, our after school programs are fortunate that a lot of our staff are school day staff, but that also means that they're, you know, putting on a mask at 730 in the morning and not taking it off until potentially 530 at night. Um, so, so right now, yeah, it's a long day. Um, so right now we're, we're running until 430 and then some of our program programs in the next couple of weeks are opening up all the, you know, until 530. And so hopefully that will be good for, for working families that, um, you know, don't get out of work until five o'clock at night. Okay. Now that's, a, that's basically your, your, your after school program, uh, before COVID-19. Now, COVID-19 introduced a number of different new uh, innovations. Uh, what is the hub, first of all? So the hub is part of um, Governor Scott's initiative and it's using the, the CARES money um, that was designated to the state of Vermont. And the, the hub money comes from the Department of Children and Families. And, you know, Governor Scott recognized that in order to get the economy going and in order to get people back to work, um, people needed childcare. And given that, you know, TRSU is in a really good place where we only have one day of remote learning, but there are our schools in Springfield and Burlington and, and all over the place where there were a lot more students and the spaces were a lot smaller. And so kids have only been able to go to school for two days a week and then and then their parents have to figure out where they're going to be those other days where they would normally be in school. Um, so they started the hub program so that after school programs and other um, people, child care centers could open up and allow students to come on those days when school is not face to face. Um, I don't, I don't like to say that like school's not in session because there's definitely remote learning happening on those days. Um, so the hub programs are specifically designed to support working families uh, when schools are not open in pers for in-person learning. Okay, so uh, can we refer to that sort of as remote versus face-to-face? -face? Um, is that about what it adds up to? That is exactly what it adds up to. And that's why we're our hub program. It, we're not sure where the word hub came from. I guess that was just Governor Scott's idea of what it was going to be called. But we, we call ours a remote learning center because we're, we, don't we don't do childcare. That's not really what after school does. Um, 
So we're, we call ourselves a remote learning center. Okay, now you more or less have defined uh, the need for it, which is obviously uh, uh, parents, parents need to go to work and uh, students need to have some help. <laughs> we don't need them at home by themselves for eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. Uh, having raised three boys, uh, I'm, sort of, I'm sort of familiar with that problem. Yes. Now, you've already indicated what the relationship to the state was. Now, the, the state sort of gave you the, the feed money, didn't it, to start the problem, uh, start the, uh, the hub? Right. So, um, the Department of Children and Families, in combination with um, the Vermont After School Program, Vermont After School is... Um, rather large organization in the state that, that, that um, communicates with and has partnerships with all after school programs and um, like YMCA's and things like that. So they came together to find individuals who could start these hub programs. Um, and so the CARES Act money is, is seed money. It will pay for the first month of September and that's it. But that is not to say that the hub programs are only lasting for a month. The hub programs are, are meant to last throughout the entire year or until they're no longer necessary. Um, but yes, the hubs, the hubs funding is only the first, the first month of funding, the, the seed money, um, which is really important because like we didn't have space. We didn't have a, a space to, to be in. Um, and, a, and a lot of programs are in that same situation where they, are, they can't be in a school because that's the day that they're doing deep cleaning or they can't be in the school because group B, those children are in the school all day, but group A is home. Um, so finding space, getting internet um, and technology, you know, TRS using a great spot for technology that we have a one-to-one -one program that every child has their own piece of technology. Not every district is in that place. Um, so it would, it would pay for space and um, any work that needed to be done for maybe fire code and, and um, equipment, technology. We went out and bought like a whole bunch of headphones. And you know, in our situation, we're at Black River High School. And so it's, it's very odd that you know, in June and July, we watched everybody empty the building. <laughs> and now, <laughs> then all of a sudden we have this hub initiative and we're like, we want in because our families need this and we know there's a need for it. So we're like, where can we go? Okay, well, Black River's empty, so we can go to Black River. And then it's like, okay, now we have seven classrooms and we're gonna invite all of these students back in to an empty school. Like there's not a desk, a table, there, there's nothing. <laughs> so we had to get furniture back into a space. And um, so we went with beanbag chairs. So all of, our, all of our kids have beanbag chairs and we went through the SU because everyone had to empty furniture out of their classrooms because there was too much furniture. Um, so like we went to Mount Holly, we rented a U-Haul, we moved um, tables and some chairs out of their gym that they were just gonna have to store for the year. And we've used those and put them into Black River. So kids do have, you know, kids who need a table and chair or a desk to, to learn, but there's, um, yeah, it's kind of beautiful in that, in that this space that was really hard to close now on Wednesdays is very full and alive again. That's, that's good. Yeah. Now, you are part of uh, the Two River Supervisory Unions, this particular hub. Are all hubs part of some, something else or some of them, uh, is it totally individual? So it, it's very um, individual. I think a lot of them are attached to after school programs and which, which 21st century after school programs are hooked to school districts. But like the YMCA is not attached or affiliated to a school district. A bunch of those have opened up teen centers. Um, I know that in the northern part of the state, there are really, you know, robust teen centers like the Boys and Girls Club and the Y and independent programs that have latched onto the hub program and are running programming through that. So I'm not sure what the breakdown is of how many are affiliated with a school and how many are not, but, but I would say um, there are probably more attached to schools than, than one might expect. Yeah, altogether, what are there, about 70 or 80 hubs? 
So I, I think 70 or 80 hubs was the goal. I don't know if they're quite there yet, but people okay. had until December to open a hub. So I think right, right now there are about 40, but there are a lot of people still in the process, you know, filling out all of the paperwork and the grant stuff and getting everything situated um, took some time and we weren't really given a lot of time. Like from when Governor Scott said, we're going to give this money and we want hubs to open to when school opened was about three weeks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not a long time. Yeah, it was a little bit like Quest, except for fast forwarded. <laughs> okay, now you, uh, you're you meeting uh, once a week, I believe, aren't you? Yeah, so currently we only are open on Wednesdays. If um, the school schedule changes, then we hope to be able to accommodate that. Um, but that will depend a lot on, on staffing. So currently we're only at one day a week that's remote learning, but if something should happen, say there were a, a COVID outbreak or something happened in Ludlow and they, and they said, we're going to close down the schools for a week, um, the hub may open during those times to support those families. Oh, that's yeah. the, that's the goal. Um, but we haven't got there yet, so we don't know if we need to be there or not. Now, you've already referred to a staff. Now, who is involved in this in uh, your particular home? So, so I have four site coordinators who, who each run their program in their, in their respective schools. So I have three of those site coordinators on staff. I also have a few staff members from summer because we run um, a fairly large summer program. So we scooped up some people from, from summer. Um, we, we communicate a lot with teachers while we don't necessarily have teachers working at the hub. We, we have a very close working relationship with them. We also have paraeducators who are still like tutoring kids and coming in and doing some services with them. Um, the state has put together kind of a, a robust marketing package to try and get more staff. Oh my goodness. Hold on. Something weird. Oh, I'm back. Sorry, I got a phone call on my computer and the whole screen just went back. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, so the state put out a call for hub people. So we have gotten a few employees that, this, that the state has called up and said, hey, if you're a college student, you didn't go back to school and you need a job, we're looking for people. Um, so we have a good mix of people from our communities that kids know and they see regularly at school and some staff people that they only get to see usually during the summer that now they're getting to carry those relationships over and then some new people. Um, it's a good mix. Oh, very good. Now, how old uh, are the people, the, the students who are involved in this? So the hub is only for students in K through sixth grade, which K is K through six, which is what after school currently in our community serves. So it's it's our regular kiddos that we're that we're used to seeing. Yeah, um, this is uh, covers uh, Mount Holly. Uh, Ludlow and uh, Cavendish? And Chester. And oh, Chester is involved in this too? Yes. Okay. Well, that's right. Chester's part of the uh, uh, Two Rivers. Now, that would include the, uh, the schools. Uh, what, what would the schools uh, explicitly be? Excuse me? What would the, the schools in, involved be? B, I assume it's LES and uh... right. So right, each one of those schools sends children to the hub program, and we actually we run a bus from um, Green Mountain that just goes the 103 corridor, as it's often you know called. That we <laughs> we start at Chester Andover, and then we pick up some more kids at um, Cavendish Town Elementary School, and then we drop them off. They get dropped off right in front of uh, Black River, and. So we, we are helping to um, make sure that there's not an equity issue or a barrier for parents to be able to, um, to access the program easily. So they can just show up at Chester Andover at 7.30 in the morning, just like they would on a normal school day and their kid will get on the bus and then they come back and are dropped back off on, on, that, on that route somewhere between you know, 4.40 and five o'clock. Okay, now what's the financial basis of this? I assume people were, uh, are asked to, uh, to pay. 
for their child? Yeah, so our after school programs, all of them are licensed child care centers, which means not only do we have to follow a whole bunch of regulations, but it also means that parents can apply for child care subsidy. So parents would fill out a bunch of paperwork and then once they do that, then the state picks up their bill. And so those families don't have to pay anything to come to the hub program. It's all, it's all included. Um, the other students, we have a sliding scale that ranges from 20 to $25, which considering I think there are schools up north that are charging $80 a day. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So we take anywhere from 20 to $25 a day per kid. So that, that's our sliding scale. Um, and then we have a pretty nice scholarship program so that if parents are, if they apply for subsidy, but for some reason they, they don't qualify, um, as long as they've been through that process and have tried to qualify, then, then the, um, the after school programs will just most of the time offer them a scholarship and then they just, they don't have to pay because we, we just want to take care of people. It's not, we're not in a, a money making situation. Um, we're just trying to break even. So as long as we can do that. We're, we're happy. Now, out of curiosity, what if uh, somebody wanted to donate money to, uh, you know, to help people with uh, scholarships or funding? They, they, could, they could absolutely do that if they wanted to. The only thing I would say at this point in time is that um, there has been a ton of money dedicated to after-school programming and child care at this point. Um, I have applied for all the funding that, that has been offered to us since March. And we have gotten with our hub money, our, we had like summer money that we applied for, for opening right after, you know, right after everything got unlocked. Mm -hmm. um, and we were reimbursed for funds that we lost over the summer due to like cleaning and extra staff and kids not coming because of fear. Um, so we have already raised over like $52,000. So just in grants. So we're, we're not necessarily a program that's looking for money. I think that, you know, schools right now are in a position that if people can, can help donate to things like that, I'm not trying to be, I mean, I'll, I'll take your money, but I don't really need it. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I just want, I just believe in transparency and, and the after school program right now is not in a position where we, we necessarily need to take money from, there are much better things to donate to, I think. Well, it's nice to know that you're funded. That's, yeah. Um, yeah, and I think that that's great. It's a huge, um, something that people need to know is that child care centers in the state of Vermont, at, like, I feel like we've been taken care of. Like the state has done a really, really good job of taking care of um, child care providers. Okay. Now, you've already cited uh, a bus that goes, I think, from Mount Holly to Chester. Mm -hmm. Chester to Ludlow. We don't have one from Mount Holly down. Oh, you don't? We don't. In the past, we've tried to run those buses and we get like one kid. And it's buses, is, buses is. Buses are really expensive. They, they tend to be something that, that bites us. Um, so unless, unless we have like a, a need, most parents in, in Mount Holly are accustomed to having to drive to Ludlow, which is not always great, but that's... Okay, so but the Mount Holly kids are, are dri driven by parents normally? Correct. Okay. Now, what do you, I think you call this the, the Wednesday program. Mm -hmm. Now, and it's located in the, um, the old Black River High School. What are the programs that are involved? I mean, what, what do you do with these kids? So families can start dropping off at 7.30 in the morning and we do breakfast, uh, free breakfast for everyone. And then um, the bus drops kids off, usually from Chester and Cavendish around eight o'clock. We have, an academic block that's set up from 8.15 until 10.30. Um, all, of, all of the kids who are not at school are expected to log on to um, virtual learning. So they have morning meetings and they meet with their classroom teacher and they're maybe given assignments or they read or something like that happens sometime between that 8.15 and 10.30 block. And so we've chunked that out as our academic portion of Wednesdays and kids 
are doing homework and they're listening to books on tape and they're doing project-based learning, they're connecting with their teachers, they're doing tutoring, um, all kinds of great things are happening in that, in that academic block so that kids are not um, falling behind or missing out on, on any of that part of it. And then after that, we have um, our structures a lot like summer camp. We have mindfulness where, where kids are going out into the woods and building forts and um, make believe and, and any, anything that kids can not really, there's not really an outcome. You know, there might be a dance party or there, there might be a scavenger hunt, but it's mostly just fun. Um, we serve lunch to everyone. We have a 30 minute read aloud time, a story time where we're just trying to get kids with books in their hands. We have a bunch of hammocks and um, kids take them out into the woods, string them up and staff members are reading Harry Potter and all kinds of books. We're trying to partner with uh, Black River Independent School who's in the same building and they're, going, they're having students do the read alouds and maybe turn into a little bit of reader's theater where they'll come down and perform for some of our students. Um, we're trying to build that relationship. And then in the afternoon, we have enrichment blocks where kids are making slime. Kids have already walked to Shaw's, bought all this stuff to make applesauce. Um, there's jewelry making. There's, you know, our staff have lesson plans and they put them together and kids then spend an hour when like an hour break in between for a little kid's choice, fun, recreation. Um, so then there's some enrichment time where they get to build. We've got some solar car kits, um, just all kinds of fun. And then uh, we have another break or we have another 45 minutes in the afternoon. If um, students didn't get a chance to wrap up their homework, they have some time then where they can do that. And kids who don't have homework just get to, hang out. Um, but it's, it's a good mix of um, academics, learning, project-based learning, and fun. Like we are, our goal through all of our after-school programs and Wednesdays right now are to be outside as much as humanly possible. Um, all of our after-school programs are outside until Halloween. Um, so we spend a lot of time outside. We've even figured out like where outside the building we can get Wi-Fi. So sometimes if you drive by on Wednesday, you'll see kids on the lawn with their beanbag chairs and their headphones on and like doing math skills outside in the fall. It's beautiful. <laughs> okay. Now, the winter coming, I assume that that's going to change. <laughs> Some of, it, some of it will have to change, but I think that um, I'm pretty sold on staying outside as much as possible. And kids really don't mind being outside. It's mostly the adults who groan about being outside. Uh, you, give to, you give a kid some hot chocolate and uh, a sled and, and the appropriate gear, and they're pretty happy being outside. <laughs> now, are they wearing masks or? So they, they have to wear masks inside, which is part of the joy of being outside. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, how would you judge the student response to this program? I think kids are having a great time. I think that, um, like I said, it's a, it's a lot like summer camp, and we feel like summer camp is successful, and kids come and have fun. I think uh, the balance between doing schoolwork and um having fun is is a little bit challenging right now because we're trying to you know figure out internet and we have 50 students and and we probably have 40 different zoom links that's a lot of zoom links to manage and they're all at different times and and so i think right now getting started we're still trying to figure some of that out um but kids seem to have a good time and out of curiosity, is the uh, the Black River uh, Independent School at all involved in this? So just in like hoping to partner more as far as having kids um, read do read alouds. And then at some point, um, you know, Kendra and I have, Kendra's the head of school, have talked about, um, you know, maybe having some of those students prepare the lessons the kids are doing. Um, I'm a big fan of project-based learning and for and it seems like the perfect mesh that if a if a 
if a student at Black River Independent School is really into planets, like why not allow them to explore that and design a lesson or a project based on teaching younger students about that? So I think that's our plan is to try and combine those two worlds, um, which for me is just like, it's just the perfect combination. But we're, we're still figuring stuff out right now. Okay. Now, you, you know, you've already mentioned that this is really a program that is designed for the, that period in time where there is remote learning going on. Uh, what happens if, um, say, from the impact of COVID-19, there's a surge or something that um, changes the school's policies uh, regarding the uh, remote versus the face-to-face -face learning? How will you have to adjust? So are you thinking more remote learning or are you thinking less remote learning? Well, I don't know. I mean, I assume, I assume it could go either way. Right. So I think that, um, I think that TRSU is pretty committed to keeping Wednesdays remote right now. So I feel like our Wednesday program will continue. Um, I, I think that if there is a, an increase in remote learning days for TRSU, that the, that the hub will try to meet those needs of families. Um, I think our biggest challenge will just be staffing. You know, right now I have 10 staff members who are working anywhere from an eight to a 10 hour day on Wednesdays because we're open so long. So is whether I could find staff who would be willing to do that for three or four days a week is very different than one day a week. So I think that um, we have the space, we have the capacity to serve about 70 students, um, the biggest challenge for us will be finding staff. And if we can find staff, then we hope to be able to seamlessly meet those needs of families. Okay, now, would you, would you think that much of a, uh, uh, a delay caused by such a change in the, the school's policy? Do I think there will be a delay? Yeah. For sure, unless, the, unless there's a bunch of paraeducators who want to move from you know, who are then no longer working in the school, then they may need some work and then I'm happy to have them. But I think that, yes, there would definitely um, be a delay just because I, I can't, can't hire staff that quickly most of the time. <laughs> okay, you know, it sounds like uh, you've got this program pretty well on hand. So how would you summarize the whole thing right now? So I think, I think the hub program is what we, what we hope for when we think about um, our government and our community all coming together to, to support each other. I feel like, I'm sorry, I keep getting all these things. Uh, <laughs> I, feel, I feel like um, the state is taking care of providers. Providers are doing our best to take care of families. And um, we're doing the best we can to take care of students. We're working with teachers to make sure that kiddos have their needs met. We're focused on social and emotional learning. Um, I, I think we're in a really good place where the hub program in combination with our partnerships with schools and teachers and um, community members is really working in the best interest of our families. And um, it feels really nice to be part of part of an organization and a group of people all working together to, to support students' need. Um, well, I, want to, I want to personally congratulate you on putting all this together because I know it's not a simple task. <laughs> and, uh, I, I know that what you're doing is really appreciated but by parents as well as students, uh, considering the, uh, the impact it has on their ability to, uh, to, you know, to work or not. But, I think that's been that's been a different experience because a lot of times like people um, I think they've just we after school's been around so long and summer camp's been around so long that people just assume that we're going to be here. So when we opened for summer everyone got a little bit lighter as far as parents and students and being able to come to camp and have somewhat of a normal a normal life for a little bit and um, the gratitude that the community and parents have have shown um, since June has has been has been really really nice, and I, I've gotten more thank yous for what you do than than ever before, and and I'm I'm grateful to be part of part of a community that that can do that part too. 
So. Well, I think you've done a great job and I just want to congratulate you on it. And I hope you can continue to, and you hope you don't have to have any special, you know, fancy changes made. <laughs> right. For reasons, for reasons that I think both of us understand. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank you again and uh, wish you good luck. All right. Thank you. Okay. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.